Every dog has his day, bro. Every dog has his day. What's good, y'all? What's good, Real Talk Squad? This is Miles. You're listening to Real Talk of Miles Johnson, where you know I always keep it real, and I have to keep it real. I've been on Jason Tatum. I've been on the Celtics saying they're frauds, saying that they're not a championship team. I said anybody in the West would spank them. I did not believe in Joe Missoula. I underestimated the role that Drew Holiday, Derek White, and to a lesser degree, Christoph Porzingis would play in this series. And I got to apologize to Celtics Nation as much as I don't want to, as much as I despise the Celtics organization, as much as I despise Celtics fans and Boston in general. I got to keep it a bean. I have to keep it real. What's the podcast? Real talk. When I'm wrong, I'll say I'm wrong. I was wrong. I thought that Luka Doncic would play like a top three player in the world. He hasn't done that. Not overall. Offensively, yes. Not defensively. Especially in game three. He was a cone. He was a flat out cone, bro. What is complaining to the refs? Complaining to his bench to challenge a call. In a span of 26 seconds, pick up two fouls and get fouled out. You are supposed to be the best player, if not the best player, at the very least top three player in this game, Luka Doncic. And you are getting fouled out? In game three of the finals, not the regular season, not, not, not the first round, not the second round, not the conference finals, in the NBA finals. And you have the nerve to then talk about the refs. And come on, bro. Now, look, I did not think that the refs should have called that sixth foul. But you shouldn't have let it get to that point. I'm keeping it consistent because great players, all-time great players, if they don't show up in the biggest moments, you pile on them. LeBron James against Dallas, ironically, he had a terrible series. What happens? He gets piled on. That's on him. Jason Tatum, last year, when he did not show up against the Warriors, he got piled on for a year. Steph Curry, there were times when you questioned if he was that guy. It took Steph Curry getting his fourth ring for people to be like, oh, yeah, he can be the best player on championship team. So you have to keep it consistent. I have to keep it consistent. I have to keep it real. I have to. Luka Doncic has not shown up this series. And it's because his defense is so bad. And his defense has been the worst. This series of his career. That I'm saying he did not show up. Now I praise Luca In game one. In game two. For his heroics offensively. I praised him for that. I definitely did. And I glossed over his defensive woes because I felt like he was making up for it offensively. I still believe that. And what did I say earlier? When Luka Doncic was on offensively, Kyrie did not match him. When Kyrie was on offensively, Luka Doncic did not match him. That is the reason why the Mavs are about to get spanked and the Celtics are finna win their championship. That's just a fact. That's a fact. If Luka Doncic and Kyrie Irving both played great games, let's just say Luka had 
a game, that game in game two. Let's say Luka had his game in game two. He had that in game three. The Mavs win. Let's say Kyrie Irving had his game in game three in game two. The Mavs win. Now you're talking about 2-1 going into game four. But when you have it where in game two, Kyrie isn't on, they lose that, a game that they could have won because the Celtics did not shoot well. And then you go into game three, and now Luka gets fouled out with less than five minutes left in the NBA Finals. What happens? Yeah. You're going to lose. Especially when Luka has the highest plus minus on his team. And you saw in that first quarter what happened. Yeah, uh, they had a 10-point lead. Luka comes out, and then what happens? It gets evaporated just like that. Just like that. He has to come back in. So I'll keep it a stack. Like, the biggest story has to be Luka's defense. It does because he's a superstar player. He's a top five player in this league. And if you're that guy, if you're the man, if you brought your team here and you're getting the praise for getting them there, for getting them to a finals, you're getting praise for being 25 years old in your first finals and honestly being ahead of the curve in what people thought that you would do. And guess what? When you don't play well, you also get the blame. That's what's part of being a superstar. That's what's part of being the best guy on a championship team or a championship level roster. And so I'm going to give Luka that same energy that I would have given Jason Tatum. If Jason Tatum was this poor defensively, I would be cooking him. So I can't tell you and I can't keep it real. I can't have a podcast that says we keep it real when I have, you know, a situation where a guy isn't getting it done on either end of the court. Specifically on defense. That was Luka. That was Luka. And the problem with Luka is that this is the worst defense I've ever seen him play. Ever seen him play. This is the worst defense I have ever seen Luka Doncic play in his career. Let's not act like his defense was always this bad. Just last month, he was praised for guarding Paul George, for guarding Kawhi, for guarding Kawhi Leonard, for guarding James Harden. He was praised for all of this. I mean, I had the stats. At the game two of the first round, what happened? He held his matchups to six for 24, 25%. Two for nine from three-point range. Against Kawhi and Paul George, they were one for four against Luka. Norman Powell, 0 for 4. Obviously, he's not a star, but still 0 for 4. James Harden, 4 for 11. Luka's defense was never this terrible. But here's the difference, right? And if I'm OKC, I'm looking at this series and being like, yo, if Jalen Williams can just become a little bit better if he can become an all-star and per, perhaps perhaps become a little bit more than an all-star become an all-nba player you're talking about the championship team i see the thunder as just a lesser version of the celtics they have that number one guy in sga but the problem was sga never had a true number two option next to him now, you can argue whether Jalen Brown or Jason Tatum, that it, whether who's the best player. You can argue that. I'll talk about that at a different time. But what you can't argue is that that one-two punch is way better than SGA and Jalen Williams. And I believe that is a big tale of why OKC lost against the Mavs and the Celtics are spanking the Mavs. Because if OKC was able to get six games on the Mavs when SGA did not have a real number two option. What's going to happen against the Celtics 
who they have multiple guys, even outside of Jalen Brown and Jason Tatum, that can get their bucket off the dribble. Drew Holiday, Christoph Porzingis was getting his in game one, to a lesser degree in game two. Derek White's shooting ability is second to none. His defense has been magnificent. So ultimately, if you give up two games against the Thunder, who aren't as good as the Celtics, but are basically constructed just like them, like the, the Thunder are a younger version of the Celtics. That's what it is. That's what it is. And in order for the Thunder to get a championship, Jalen Williams will have to basically improve and become a perennial all-star guy. That's that. That's what's, that's what's going to happen. So my judgment of hating on the Celtics, I was definitely hating on the Celtics. Now, I thought that the Mavs would win, and I was serious about that. But my hate and disdain for the Celtics clouded my judgment. It did. It clouded my judgment, and now we're sitting here, and the Celtics are on the verge of sweeping these guys. The same series that I thought the Mavs would win in five games. Man, that's embarrassing. Man, that's so wrong. Man, that's so wrong, man. It's actually despicable. It's despicable. So, Lucas' defense is going to be the biggest story, but I also look like I look at the Mavs role players. I'll give you P.J. Washington, he showed up. Derek Lively, he showed up. I'm looking at a guy in Derek Jones Jr. No threes. Maxi Kleba is scared to shoot the ball when he's there just to shoot the ball. Tim Hardaway Jr., he's played 20 minutes, zero points, literally zero across the board, did not do anything, was simply running around doing some cardio. That's what that was. So the biggest story is definitely Luka and his defense, him complaining, him fouling out in an NBA Finals game. That's just unacceptable. But what's also the case is the guys that Jason Kidd put in the lineup folded too. And I'm not going to hold it against Jason Kidd for putting Tim Hardaway in the game because, shoot, we need some offense. And Tim Hardaway is capable of hitting five threes, four threes when he gets hot. But Tim Hardaway is going to look back at this and be like, yo, in the finals, I ain't show up. And and it's going it's going, it's going to eat him up because it's like, look, I don't know if I'll ever get back there. When you get to those points, you got to show up. But P.J. Washington, he got my respect, though, because he was cooking, though. P.J. was cooking. Derek Lively who had not so good game one and game two. He had a better game two than game one. He ended up showing up, right? But ultimately, if I got to keep it consistent, I have to keep it at being, I have to keep it real. The biggest story can't be the role players. The biggest story has to be the superstar player in Luka Doncic. If he played better, if he wasn't fouled out, this Mavs would have damn sure had a better chance. I'm not going to say that. I know for a fact the Mavs would have won if Luka didn't get fouled out, but I know that that hurt their chances. I know that if Luka Doncic has the number one plus minus on his team, that him being out for the final four minutes of the game doesn't make it better. It doesn't increase their chances. It actually hurts their chances. So ultimately, Luka has to take this on the chin. He has to look back on this. And I believe that he will look back on this in a year or two years or three years when he wins his first championship and be like, I could have been better. The only thing is that it's surprising when you see guys that like in their first finals, you know, like they didn't show up. It's always been like, oh, maybe they didn't shoot well. Maybe it was something offensively. Like with LeBron, it was what he wasn't doing offensively. It wasn't defensively. It was what he wasn't doing offensively. This is the first time in my memory that a guy gets to the finals and defensively, defensively is the reason why his team did not get it done. 
if not the reason, the biggest reason. Definitely the biggest reason. Definitely the, definitely the biggest reason or the biggest story. I'll say that. It's the biggest story. That's the biggest story. Luka's defense and how atrocious it's been. Like, if Luka's defense is was at, like, a 4 out of 10 before this finals, but, but his offense was so good that it made up for it, this finals, it's been at a 0. It's been at a 0, and... His offense would have to be so, so great, especially in game three. He would have to have a 35-10-10 game for that to compensate his lackluster play on defense. So, like, that's the story. If you're going to be that bad defensively, then you have to be extraordinary. You have to be extraordinary offensively. And Luka was good. He was very good offensively. Uh, he wasn't efficient. So I, he was he was decent offensively for his, his standards. But he was far from great. And he was far from being extraordinary. That's the game. I apologize to the Celtics once again. How many times do I have to say it? I apologize. Crap on me in the comments. Celtics fans, y'all deserve to crap on me. But look. I hate the Celtics, bro. You're talking MJ. We always keep it real. I'm out.